Good afternoon, and welcome to DARPA Forward. I'm excited to be here in Colorado with all of you to discuss some new technologies that are truly advancing our horizons in national security. My name is Rohit Chandrasekhar, and I'm a program manager in the Defense Sciences Office. And the technology I'd like to talk to you about today is the optical lens. Now, all of us work with optical lenses on a daily basis without really knowing it. Uh, it's the fundamental element that builds the camera in each and every one of your smartphones. And the lenses in your smartphone probably look pretty similar to what you see on the left-hand side. Incidentally, those lenses also look pretty similar to what Galileo used in his telescope 400 years ago. Now, if you look at any imaging system, whether it be a telescope, microscope, or a camera, it almost always has 10, 15 lenses in them. And the reason for that is, as you look at the top right of the graph, a single lens works pretty well at a single wavelength, let's say green light, for example. But if we send blue light or red light through that same lens, the lens's performance deviates a little bit. Uh, and this is what leads to what's called distortions or aberrations, where you have different frequencies of light focusing at different points on that axis, leading to an imperfect image. And so what's traditionally done is we add additional lenses, maybe a different lens shape, different lens material, that allows us to correct these distortions and really stack these wavelengths together so we get that crisp, perfect selfie that we're all looking for. And it's for this exact reason that if you pull out your cell phones right now, the camera actually sticks a little bit outside of the phone. And the reason for that is our electronics have benefited from significant advancements over the past few decades, where we have significant reduction in the footprint with enhanced capabilities, but our optics have lagged behind a little bit in terms of their cap capabilities. Now, about a decade ago, there was a group of scientists in the academic space starting to ask a more fundamental question. Do we actually need a lens to focus light? If you look on the left, this is just a schematic of a, a bulk refractive lens, and what's happening is light passes through, it's refracted or bent, and sent towards that focus, which is how you focus light with the lens, basically as how a microscope works. But could we perhaps take the lens out and just replace it with a thin layer of small structures that effectively could work as a lens and just send photons or send light where they needed to go, to that focus spot? Another artist rendering right there, presenting what, what this could perhaps look like. Now, the scientists that worked on this identified one main thing. In order to really work as a good lens, you needed to create structures that were much, much smaller than the wavelength of light they operated at. So let's say, for example, green light, 500 nanometers. I need structures on the order of 100 nanometers or so. And so they actually did this. As you see in the middle panel, uh, that's, a, that's an SEM image or a, a microscope image of an actual uh, structure. Uh, and you can see that these structures are actually much smaller than the wavelength of light. Now, the challenge was that, as you see on the right-hand side, the devices that they fabricated were pretty small in aperture size. We're talking about maybe 100 microns or so, which is very far from what would be relevant to any DOD or even commercial application. And the other challenge is it was limited in bandwidth, limited in efficiency, that really would impact its ability to transition to any real application. But the idea that you could take the glass out of a camera was powerful enough that DARPA decided to investigate a bit further and put together a program called DARPA Extreme Optics and Imaging. And the idea of the program was really to address three things. The first is, can we take this idea of a planar optic or a meta lens, but can we make really good optical components? Is it possible for us to enhance the scale, bring it to centimeter scale where it becomes relevant to cameras and true applications? But can we also make them highly efficient? Can we make, get them to, to at least perform on par with our current technologies? Now, I've already mentioned to you to be able to success, be successful at this, you need structures that are much smaller than the wavelength. So if I need 100 nanometers, but I need a centimeter scale aperture, I'm talking about seven orders of spatial scale that needs to be accounted for in design. And so we really need multi-scale modeling and design tools to really guide the design of such optics. And if we can be successful at that, then we can make the last jump, which is really to say, how do these technologies really impact the age-old field of optical system design? Can we use these tools to really understand how we can co-optimize such unique planar optics along with refractives that could really lead to disruptive reduction in size, weight, and power, or swap of optical systems? Uh, and perhaps even enhance functionality. And I'm happy to share that we've been successful at each of these routes, and it's effectively led to an understanding that we could perhaps lead to a reduction of an order of magnitude in the overall swap of an optical system. And I can talk about that a bit more in the next slide. But for today's tech demo, 
I want to highlight that first one, the optical component, and, and talk about some new developments that have come from the program. Uh, many thanks to, to, to one of my DARPA risers who's here today with us. Um, so I've already mentioned that we were limited in 100 microns. We want to get to centimeter scale. Well, I'm happy to say that uh, the team has been successful in getting all the way out to the first 10 centimeter optic. This is basically the same aperture size as a traditional four inch telescope, for example. Now, this is by no means a trivial task. Uh, the metal lens, as you can see, is at the very top. And in fact, I have it integrated here into a system, which I'll mention later on as well. And so this is truly the first 10 centimeter metal lens. It has a focal length of around 15 centimeters and operates at 632 nanometers or red light. For comparison, you look at the bottom, refractive lens. This is a lens that you can purchase today online. Uh, it has about 40 times thicker and it's about 17 times heavier. And this is just a single optic. You can imagine the kind of gains you would get over an entire system. Now, obviously to get to this scale, you need to get fabrication out of the lab into the industry. And that's exactly what the team did. They found a way to really take nanoscale fabrication and integrate it with CMOS foundry processes. And so what that means is they actually took the lens, as you see in the middle panel, they chopped it up into seven unique areas and created, created masks and brought them together and fabricated them in a lithography process. So in that middle panel where you see reticle one, two, three, four, or reticle one, two, three, these are actually different phase masks that are brought together and fabricated into one layer. And the, the addressability and the pristine quality of the fabrication is something that is truly hallmark. And because of that, they were able to characterize the lens on the, very, on the right panel and show that you can get diffraction limited focusing. You can actually focus light. Uh, and you could do this, again, at a 10 centimeter scale, which had never been done before. And as you see in front of you today, they took the next step and really integrated this into the first meta-optic telescope. Uh, so this is a telescope, as you see in front of you, with only a single optic, which is the meta lens itself. It includes a helical focuser. It includes a filter, a monochromatic filter, which is designed to match that meta lens, and a cooled sensor as well in the back. Uh, and they were actually able to run some pretty cool night tests imaging the North American nebula. And in fact, my DARPA riser, uh, Yoon Soo Park from Harvard University, um, has some other images along with him today, which are even more fascinating. So I certainly recommend that you go reach out to him to, 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 to get the download on, on really new capabilities and get to know more about how he really uh, pioneered the work and how he fabricated this lens. And so this really has been a, a truly powerful capability. Uh, and the idea of the meta-optic has now transitioned in many ways. Um, for example, uh, we have now transitioned to both the DOD sector as well as the commercial sector. On the DOD side, uh, it has now transitioned to the Air Force Research Labs, where they're now thinking about how this meta-optic could integrate into gimbal telescopes on board UA, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. And as you'd expect, uh, it is a swap-constrained environment, and so any additional weight gains you get means additional round-trip time of my UAV or perhaps even more room for an additional sensor. And it's through those trades that we were able to successfully show the 10x swap production as well that I mentioned beforehand. On the other hand, we are also having transition over to the commercial sector. There have been companies that have spun out from our program as well as across the industry where they are now leveraging the ability to transition fabrication alongside traditional semiconductor chips. And so you're now going to start seeing optics fabricated in the same line as sensors moving forward. And many of them have now signed partnerships with sensor manufacturers where we're going to start to see meta optics truly impacting sensor functionality moving forward. And so with that, I'd like to close off and, and emphasize the fact of transition. Tr we take transition seriously at DARPA, and program managers are constantly thinking, how do we frame our ideas, how do we implement our ideas, and how do we demonstrate our ideas that could really foster successful transition out to the warfighter, to the user, and to the world at large. And so as you engage with program managers and their CETAs, office leadership, DARPA leadership, if you can help us think about what is the path to transition, what are really the risks to getting there, and what demonstrations in the midterm could help mitigate that risk and really convince your users that this is going to be a powerful idea, is going to help us be most successful in championing your ideas. And so with that, I want to thank you for taking the time for listening to this idea. Um, it is really with your work and with the idea of transition that we can take technologies forward and in line with this conference title, Truly Advance the Horizons of National Security. Thank you so much.